this lesson I will preach. That you, O oh Father, will open our hearts and open our minds so that we can listen to your words and learn from it. So that the next time when we go outside and someone asks us, we can also teach them. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 We are going to learn about a story that we have heard many, many, many times. <laughs> and whilst I was pondering about this, God put my heart in a different way than ever before. I am going to learn about this. Ark. What is that? Noah's Ark. Noah's Ark. Say it after me. Noah's Ark. Again. Noah's Ark. Somebody will say, Ah. Noah's Ark happened thousands of years ago. What is that interesting today? Yes. There's more to it than that, than that you have learned by the Bible's, what you call it, Sunday school. There's deeper things in it. And today we are going to share it together. You know, I'm not selfish. Eh? I always share with you what that I have. So today we are out, counting our number, we are more than 25. So that means everybody can read a verse today. Did you say Elish? We are all going to read together Genesis chapter 6. Everybody will go by verse by verse. So that I want you all to be part of the story. Alright? And then later, and then later, by the Spirit of the Most High God, we are going to do what you call expository sermon. Say it after me. Expository sermon. One more time. Expository sermon. Good one. Expository comes from various ways. One, exposing the story. Expository. We are going to expose the story of Noah's Ark so that you know that, wow, it's about me today. Amen. So we are going to read together Genesis chapter 6. I'm taking the first verse and I will go by line like that. Yeah? Verse 1, I read. Now it came to pass, when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born to them, verse 2, Eric. You cannot ask me Genesis. Bring my card to continue, verse 2. That's the sons of men, uh huh. Mm -hmm. Verse 3. Mm -hmm. If you are not here, we know where for you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Verse 4. Of renown. Verse 5, right, James? Then the Lord, then the Lord saw that the weakness of man was great. Nay, wickedness, please. Uh, wickedness. Please stand up and read. Then the Lord saw that the weakness of the wickedness. The wickedness of man was great in the earth. And that every intent of the thoughts of his hand was only able to continue. Please follow us because I'll call you randomly. <coughs> follow the story. So I'll pick you up randomly and you read the verse we are. He just finished verse 5. Verse 6. Sorry. Uh, verse 6. And the Lord was sorry that he, he had made more on the earth. And it grave him to his heart. Verse 7. Verse 7. Verse 7, and the Lord said, I will destroy men whom I have created from the face of the earth, mm -hmm. both, both men <clears throat> and beast, and the creeping things, and the flocks of the earth. For I am sorry that I have made them. Amen. In the fowls of the earth. Verse 8. Verse 8. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. That is verse 8. We will come back to this voice. Verse, Eric, verse 9. Genealogy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You come back to verse 9. Please sit down. Thank you. Sister Betty, verse 10. Verse 10. 
Noah has three sons. It's kindly stand up. Thank you. Okay, Noah has three sons. Mm -hmm. Shem, mm -hmm. and Japheth. Japheth, thank you. It's like when in verse 11. Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. The earth was also corrupt before God. And the, the, earth, the earth was also corrupt, corrupt. Mm -hmm. before God. And mm -hmm. the earth was filled with violence. And the earth was filled with violence. Brayukan, verse 12. And God looked upon the earth and behold, it was corrupt. For all flesh has corrupted. They are we upon the earth. Amen. 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 <coughs> Sister Emmanuel, verse 13. Manuela, verse 13. Sister Gifty, verse 13. Sister Gifty, verse 13, please. You can sing it up. You can sing it up. So God said to Noah. God said to Noah, huh? I'm going to put an end to all people, mm -hmm. but the earth is filled with violence because of them. I am surely going to destroy both them and the earth everywhere. Amen. Mr. Mm -hmm. Pep, verse 14. It's P. No, we don't want P. We are P.I. We don't want P. Mm -hmm. Verse 50, 40. Uh -huh. Verse 50, <coughs> Fourteen. If you're not ready, I'll come back to you. Should I come back to you? Are you ready? Oh, sorry. Let's go. Verse fourteen. Mm -hmm. Make yourself an ark of God for me. Mm -hmm. Make rooms in the ark and cover it inside and out, outside mm -hmm. the pitch. Verse sixteen. Sister Portia. Fifteen. Sorry, Portia. Fifteen. Mm -hmm. And this is the fashion which you shall make of it. Mm -hmm. The length of the ark shall be 300 covets, mm -hmm. the breadth of it 50 covets, mm -hmm. and the height of it 30 covets. Thank you. Verse 16, Brother James, please. You shall make a window for the ark, mm -hmm. and you shall finish it with a covet from above, mm -hmm. and set the door of the ark in its side. Mm -hmm. You shall make it with lower, second, and third dots. Yes. Amen. God bless you. Sister... Ophelia, verse 17, please. Verse 17. For behold, I bring a flag of waters upon the earth to destroy all flesh in which is the breath of life from under heaven. Everything that is on earth shall die. Amen. Amen. I can talk, verse 18. But I, will, I will, but I will establish my covenant with you and you will enter the earth, you and your sons and your wife and your sons, wife and you, uh, with you. So. Verse 19, Akuma. <laughs> uh, my Bible is in the In Don't worry, read. In Francais. That's P. Oh, you don't have English with you? Yeah, in Francais. Francais. What about you, sister? It's English? <laughs> what do you have? 19. You are to bring into the ark two of all living creatures, male and female, to keep them alive together. Amen. Amen. Uh, we reached here. Eliezer. Verse 20, please. Of all after their kind. Of the verse after their kind. And of cattle after the kind of every living thing of the earth after its kind. Two of every soul shall come into you and to keep one. Amen. Verse 21. Edmond. Take that unto thee of all food that is eaten, and that shall gather it to thee, and it shall be for thee, and it shall be for food for thee and for them. Thank you. Twenty-two, brother Edmo. Uh, Ed, uh, Emmanuel. 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 Sorry. The last verse. Twenty-two. No. According to all that God commanded him, so did he. Amen. God bless all of you for taking part. We did not take part in the reading, Andy. I want you to repeat verses um, 14, 15, 16 for us. Please listen to what Andy is going to read. Three verses. That's why we are capitalizing on today. Please. Make thee an ark of gopher wood. Make thee an ark of gopher wood. Uh huh. Room shall be make in the ark. Make rooms in the ark. Uh huh. And shall pitch in middle and middle. 
and cover them with pitch in and out. Verse 15, sir. And this is the fashion which Phil shall do. Skip 15 and go to 16. Uh huh. 16. A window shall do make to the earth. You shall make a window. Say a window. window. Good. Go on. And in the cover shall do finish it above. And the door of the ark shall do set in the side thereof. With lower second and third story shall do make it. Good. Amen. God bless you. So, see the picture on the, on the screen? This is the ark that God asked Mr. Noah to design. Today we compare it to uh, the cruise or the Titanic. Uh, Titanic, or whatever you call it. Now, there are certain things I want you to watch out here. After giving the measurement and everything, he said, make how many stories? Who for Felipe? Three? Felipe. First, second, and third floors. Again, make a door. The door should be on the side of the boat, or the ark, or the box. According to the Hebrew translation, it's a box. And make only one tiny window. Where should the window be? On top of it. Now, watch the screen here. This is the side of the ark. The door was on the side here. But the question is, when you build your house, where do you put your door? On the front. Is it on the front here? Yes. They're supposed to put the door. <coughs> but why the side? You come back there. Again, three stories. Why three stories? But not more. Look at the number of animals we have in this world. All the species, all of them, they are supposed to get into it. But no one should put only three Philippine, what is that? Stories. Stories. Why not more? We we'll come to that. And lastly, the window is there on top. The question is, when you build your house, where do you put your window? It's the side of the houses, right? But why the top? Whenever you read stories like this, we just keep over it. There are meaning to it. So they are going to expose them. Amen. Now, number one, <coughs> Noah himself, the man Noah, and the ark, both of them represent Jesus Christ. Hmm? God said, make yourself. He didn't say, make for yourself. Make yourself. The ark. So who is the ark? Noah. Aha. So when you are reading the Bible, the Bible, be very careful the things you meet. You are going to enter them one by one. Luke chapter 24, verse 24. Once upon a time, when Jesus Christ arose from the dead, he was going to a city called Emmaus. He met some people, and they were talking about what has happened recently. Jesus Christ talked with them, and he opened their eyes to the scriptures. This is why Jesus said, how you are foolish and how slow you are believe all what the prophets have spoken. Mm -hmm. Did not the Messiah have to suffer these things and enter into his glory? They were talking about Jesus. But they did not, did not even know who he was. Sometimes somebody can preach to you about Jesus while he himself doesn't know him. Jesus said, everything that the prophets have said concerning him must come to pass. Beginning from where? Beginning from? From? I repeat. Everything that the prophets have written concerning Jesus must come to pass. Beginning from where? Jesus. Good. So beginning from who? Noah. Noah. Moses. Moses, thank you. Beginning of it. Beginning of it. Good. Who wrote the apostolic religious read? Moses. So that means everything from the prophet, from Moses, must be fulfilled according to what is written. So did Moses write the act? Yes. 
So that means Jesus is in the ark. So let's go and find it. He said, and all the prophets and explained to what he said concerning the scriptures and uh, the scriptures concerning himself. Besides being an account of historical events, everything that this ark contains is in Jesus. I'm going to take them one by one. The next chapter says, verse 9, where we just read, is fulfilled in John, first John 3 5. The future existence of mankind was saved by the righteousness of one man. When we read, the Bible said, the earth was corrupt. Everybody does stupid things. Violence was everywhere. Last time somebody sent me a WhatsApp, a guy in New Zealand, he was angry. He picked up two machine guns and entered into a mosque. <laughs> just killing people just like that. Did this kind of thing happen no worse time? Yes. yes. If it's worse, they used to eat human beings, flesh and alive. All these things, God's first said, ah, bah. The end has come to all living things. I can't stand this anymore. In fact, I repent for making man. Yeah, God's heart was broken. Are we breaking God's heart these days too? Yes. yes. <laughs> we are breaking it every day. You hear one thing about me, you go to a cell. I cell, see how that. You add more to what was not there. And it gives God's heart for making you. For you are doing the wrong one. Exactly. Be careful, God does not grieve his heart in you. Amen. Amen. Jesus was also completely righteous and sinless. So you see, Noah in this time, he was perfect. According to the Bible, where we just read verse 9. When you come to Jesus in this time, he didn't sin. So more or less, Noah has been found in Christ. Are you following me? Mm -hmm. Now, let's move on. We come to why the ark. God put all the animals on earth into Noah's care. <coughs> Last time I asked this question, how many animals can you count? Uncountable species. Mm -hmm. All the earth, eight people remained. So that means God entrusted everything he had made into Noah's care. In our time, God has put everything on earth under who? Christ Jesus. Under Christ. So Noah and Christ are now being compared. You can read this one in Ephesians 1, 22, but we are not going there because of time's sake. Again, God established an eternal covenant with himself and Noah. When Noah came out of the ark, the Bible says in verse 9 of chapter 9, he made a sacrifice. Mm. God smelled it. Mm, what a sweet aroma. Mm. Last time we did this, we learned this. And God <coughs> said, As long as heaven and earth remains, number one, seed time and harvest. Mm -hmm. The seven for two weeks ago, right? Mm -hmm. Summer and winter, mm -hmm. cold and heat, mm -hmm. day and night will never mm -hmm. cease. Mm -hmm. And I will no more kill people with water like I have done. And God made a symbol to seal the covenant. What was the symbol? Rainbow. The rainbow. So God made a covenant with Noah. When you come to our time, did Jesus do the same thing? Yes. John 3, 16. God loved the world. He loved the world so much that he gave how many people? How many people? Only his son. Now, whosoever believes in him, I promise you, that's my covenant I make with you. If you believe in my son, you will not perish. But have, but have, how many of us have everlasting life? Mm. Next week, I will test you. Preach. In case <coughs> she falls sick, <laughs> eh, you know, fall sick, you come in place. But we do Bible studies concerning this before she comes in. Uh, 
So, God also made a promise to mankind, as he did with Noah's time. So here again, there is a fulfillment in Christ through Noah. The ark itself is Christ. And about the ark was made of wood. Yes, it's a symbolism. <coughs> Let me bring it in. He asked him, make an ark with a gopher wood. He make all this measurement, 300 cubits here, 50 cubits there, this and that. The measurement was accurate. When the rain fell, the Bible says, and Noah did according to what God has commanded. Question one. Do you always do according to what God has commanded? No. That was answer for you to answer. But when he did it accordingly, the result was excellent. When Christ came on earth, he did according to what God has instructed him to do. Kyrie. End of the day, did we have a result from Christ's death? Yes. He said, so, make yourself an ark. So where is the ark here? No. Again, make rooms in it. He says, say, in my father's house, there are many... Those are the rooms in him. Christians will say, if one is in Christ, he is a new. So you are inside him. Just as all the animals entered inside the ark. Mm -hmm. Was the tiger in the uh, ark? Yes. Was the sheep in the ark? Yes. Ooh. And the ants? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. And the elephant? Yes. Eh? Yes. Crocodile? Yes. Oh yeah? Yes. Antelope? Yes. Kusi? Yes. Uh -huh. Appointed? Yes. Snake? Yes. Mosquito? Yes. <laughs> Snail and what? Yes. Tortoise. Yes. The cheetah. <laughs> 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 they were all in, right? <laughs> Question. Did you ever read in the Bible somewhere that the uh, this big guy, what do you call? Him? Yes. This big animal over there. Hey. Elephant. 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 Step on the ant. Did you read it in the Bible? And picture it? Did you read in the Bible that the lion went and ate the sheep? We call one animal Ofui. I don't know the English name. But when you give a. You can't say it. What's your name? Stinky. Stinky. <laughs> Stinky, yeah. Was he also in the ark? Yeah. Yes. He was also in the For all the days that the animals stayed in the ark together, the, the Stinky don't give air, he gave. But the antelope have to tolerate it. <laughs> mm. There's another guy. Everyone will be oh, happy. Quiet. Quiet. The other animals, they have to tolerate one another. The tiger saw the antelope, so, mm, or the leopard bishop, or the leopard operator. But he had to control his desire. Appetite. The snake was there. I want to bite him. Say, hey, my friend, take it easy. We are in the act together. They lived in the ark peacefully, harmoniously, peacefully. And this big guy with the big feet, what did you call the elephant, did not picture the ant. If that be the case here, yeah, why are we in Christ and we are picturing each other? The thing there will give pain. And Chris will say, hey, didn't you hear that baby in the sound? <laughs> If even animals were able to tolerate one another, 
how much more we confess. Were they all in the ark? Yes. The same time? Yes. The same day? Yes. I never read that the crocodile ate the antelope. Are we all in Christ? Yes. Uh -uh. Are we all in Christ? Yes. Do we practice forgiveness? Yes. <laughs> I'm sure that when the uh, cheetah can run very fast, wanted to enter the ark for the tigers that can run faster than you, they tolerated each other. Two, if God waited for the snail, slack, tortoise, not tortoise? Skill part <laughs> to crowd langsam, langsam, langsam into the ark, he wait for you. The moral is that in life, don't rush. Mm. Mm. If I am cheater, I can run ahead of you, mm. and you are a tortoise, you do your tortoise thing <laughs> and crawl. <laughs> and crawl. Mm. The same God who gave the strength to cheater to run fast. We'll give you the patience to slow. So in Christ, there is no race. Are we here? Are you learning something? They're learning the Bim. God said, when you have made this wooden box, cover the outside with wait, 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 pitch. Pitch nowadays is like kotal. This black thing we use in covering our road. Now, pitch in Hebrew is kofa. Kofa means something else. Let me read for you. Kofa means atonement. If I have something that will leak and I want to prevent the leakage, I'll have to smear the tar, particles, so that water from outside will not get in. Mm? Because no one's time, the water was destruction. It will destroy the whole earth. Mm -hmm. So if he allowed a tiny hole alongside the ark, the water will enter in and destroy the ark. So that means we need to seal it. The water will not get in. So God told him, cover the outside with pitch. The pitch represents the blood of Christ. When destruction is about to come at the end of the age, 1 Peter 3, 1 Peter 4, and you are in Christ, his blood shields you from the destruction from outside. But if you don't know and you don't know and you chill to put up what they are, then the water will take you away. So that means if you are in Christ, you are under the shelter of his covenant. Sealed with his blood, just like Noah sealed leakages with the pitch. It did not end there. God said again, this what I just spoken about. The kofa means ransom, it means atonement. Okay, that's what I've said. I'm moving faster. First Timothy chapter 2, verse 5 and 6. For there is one God and one mediator between God and mankind. The man Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom. So for somebody to donate a blood, if you are sick, go to the hospital, we need blood for you. Somebody must donate his blood for you. In Noah's time, he must go and find a pitch. I don't know how the guy got to go out from. But God provided. In our time, God wanted a man who is going to pay the ransom for our sins and use his blood to seal the covenant. You look on the earth. Will you go and die for mankind? I have two children. I can't die. No. Will you go and die for mankind? I'm just 20. I'm too young. I can't wait. Connie, will you go and die? Hey, 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 I'm with the family. I have some Zara correction. I need to go and wear this week. God looked and looked. Nobody was qualified until Christ himself said, I will go. So he gave himself as a ransom. So that we can get his blood of atonement so that he will cover us from the destruction of the earth. Mm -hmm. 
So when God comes in the last day for the judgment and they will be destroyed, you and I, we are safe. Why? Because we are in Christ. Just as the whole and the master who were in the ark. Exactly the same thing. Did you go? Now, let's continue. Good. Let me skip here. Again, there was only one door to the ark. Have you asked yourself why? All this numerous traffic of animals and yet only one door. If it were you, you make three doors. The cheetahs will pass here, the crocodiles will pass there, the slow animals will pass there, human beings will pass there. So, in your house, how many doors do you have? At least two. Two. Front door and back door. Garage. Garage, but just a door. At least two. But Noah had only one door to the ark. This symbolizes, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. the life. Nobody can come to the Father said by, by me. Only one. He said, did not say, nobody can come to the Father except by us. There's only one way to the Father. Just as the ark had only one door to enter. Dablek, it did not end there. If you want to be saved, trust in Christ and believe in him. Why is it that the door was put on the side of the ark, but not the front or the back? We read that one, right? Now, let's get to the Bible. When God needed a wife for Adam, what did he do? From where? Now, where is your rib? On your front? At your back? No. By your side comes. He picked a rib from there. And then he made unto beautiful woman for Adam. So he became the wife of Adam. And when they read the Bible, read the Bible, the Bible compares the church as a wife and Christ is a husband. So now, for us to be the wife of Christ, I must come from his side. That's how it is. Let me put that one aside. While Christ was on the cross, and the time was due, those days, when they crucify you, and you are not dying quickly, they break your legs. Yeah. So the soldiers came to the first one on the left. He was still suffering, he was still dying. The time of the Passover is getting there, so they have to break his legs to speed up the killing process. Those people, they are very wicked, though. So they broke the leg of the other one. And bring the drag of the other one. But because it has already been prophesied that Christ will die without any of his bones broken, you must be that person the other day, right? Yeah. When they reached there, Christ was already gone. But in order to let the scripture come to pass, don't forget what you read, say, all that the prophets have spoken concerning me must come to pass. The soldiers used the spear to choke where? His stomach, his back, his where? His side. And the Bible says, blood and water oozed out. That same side where Eve was taken, that same side was pierced. So that me and you can enter Christ. So the door on the ark side represents where Christ was pierced. So all the animals and the sons and uh, 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 daughters in law of Adam, uh, sorry, Noah, they got into the ark through the side of the ark. Likewise, me and you, we came into Christ through his side. Should I continue? Yes. Hmm. It's there. John 1934. But one of the two with a spear pierced his side, and for which came there out blood. And water. The blood, as I said earlier, on, is for the ransom and for the atonement. And the water is to cleanse me and you. That's what I thought. I continue by saying that there was also only one window. Only one window. 
The window was not placed on the front side, neither at the back side, nor even at the side. The question is, why the top? Who can answer me for 50 euros? <laughs> eh? So that when the sun shines, it comes to the top. But your window in the house is on the side. When the sun shines, it comes in. You have, you have said your chance. You want to try? You are trying to tell you no. Don't try. I still give it to you. Eliezer. Hey, one day you can build the bent in the One day you can build the bent get here in the evening. Thank you. Uh, we just learned. Uh, no, hold on, not yet. He didn't get complete. I'm going to explain more. Hey. <laughs> hold on. He said it's right, but let, let me go in deeper. When you are praying, you raise your eyes to the heavens, right? That's what he says. I'm going to the Bible studies. No. The window is at the top. Like Christian said, for the right to come in. That's another good one. But, whenever we all pray, what do we do? Eh? Okay, imagine, imagine, the window is here. You're going to the tallest guy. Open the window. What will you do? You either stand on something or you jump. You have to push it, right? When you are jumping, look at my knee. Where is my knee going? Down. 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 <laughs> Your knee goes up. Your knee goes down for you to jump. So whenever you want to reach God, go down on your knees. Exactly. So it also symbolizes humility. So we want to open up the window. To see God's glory coming in, we must go down on your knees in order to jump higher. I don't know which area in your life that there is darkness that you want light of the Lord to penetrate through, you need to open the window up there. Mm. To open the window up there, nobody is going to carry you. Mm. You carry yourself by first going down so that you can have the force from to spring up. Again, you said, correctly, that when we are praying, we look up to God. Excellent. He is the altar and the finisher of your faith. Amen. It's only him that you have to look to. The window was not on the side for you to look on the side. But now when I look on my side here, I can see beautiful Betty sitting. I can see that one there, not my side and side. When I watch for it, I can see I can I don't want to watch nobody. But when I look through the window to my God. So the window there symbolizes where you have to focus when you pray. Humble yourself, break down the knees for momentum together. Okay. Amen. Amen. I've said about all this. Let's continue. The ark kept Noah and his family alive. Jesus does the same thing by keeping me and you alive. Amen. But the book of Romans said, all have sinned and have fallen short of God's glory. So for you to be in good contact with God, you must follow Christ's steps. Noah was saved from the flood by being in the ark. So we are also saved by being in who? In Christ. Amen? Good. So what we learned in the Sunday school is entirely different from what you are hearing now, right? Yes. Now, there is only one act that saved family Noah from the flood. And there is only one Jesus that is saving mankind from all the things we are seeing here. Other people say, I am the Christ. Some people say, even I am prophet yes. They want to tell you that without them, you are nothing. They will go to the mortuary and get water from the corpse. Mm -hmm. When you drink this, ah, you are going to be looking beautiful. Your hair will grow to your hair, and your this one will be that, and you will not die. It's not true. There's only one Jesus who gives life. Only one. God did not ask Noah to build two acts. Only one. And that one saved the entire world. So this Christ, he saves the entire world. So if I were you, I 
shall maintain and remain in him. Oh, good. Now, question, maybe the last one. Who closed the ark? Noah. When you enter your house, you want to go to your bedroom and sleep. I'm coming, please. Who closes your door? Yourself. Holy yeah. Spirit. Adam. Adam was there years and thousands of years ago before. Uh, uh -huh. It was. Oh, I forgot the eye, but it's okay. So let's see for him to demonstrate his amazing faith by first with it. Okay, hold on, hold on. The question was. When the whole animals got inside the ark, who closed the door? The same door was where they walked in. The same door is where they used to walk in. That's what the entry slab. Maybe I'm here. So the question is. When they are entered, who closed the door? The Holy Spirit. Somebody says Holy Spirit. Somebody says uh, uh, the wind. Somebody says Noah himself closed it. It was God. The Bible says when they had entered, God closed the ark. Why did God close the ark? You know, when the guy gets in, he could have put the rope and closed it. But why did God close the ark? To seal it. To seal it with what? With the ransom order, P I T C, the pitch. That represents Christ's blood. Because if the door is closed, hold on here. Let me make this an example. All this place is already closed with the pitch, right? The door is now closed. So when it is now uh, open, when it's now closed, by all means, there's going to be a gap on the sides. So God himself made sure, say make sure, make sure, make sure, make sure. that the earth is closed and intact, that no destruction whatsoever can enter. Let's go to the tomb when Jesus Christ was buried. When they bury Jesus in the tomb, what did they do? They rolled a stone and sealed it. But because Christ himself is unsealable, mm. he got out. Yeah. But this time, mm -hmm. God himself said, I myself will make sure that those I have saved will not perish. So he closed the ark and sealed it. But the rain began to come. So if you are here, the Bible says God has sealed you with his spirit. The Holy Spirit is the one that has sealed you. So the moment you step out, you are not going to destruction. Once you are in Christ, you are safe. As long as the antelope and the orchids and those guys were in the ark, Everyone was saved until they got out. And then come see Chase. Abra will chase this one. The cheetah will chase that one. And they are eating themselves in the forest. It's happening right here. Let so, me the same. When we are in the church, and I do this, <laughs> there's no problem. <laughs> you will laugh. But when we step out there, I do the same thing to you, do me. <laughs> Why? We are out of the ark. <laughs> but that should be the case. As long as we are in Christ, we are sealed by God. Amen. They need to get out again. So this, you see, is Christ. The outside color black you see is not the color of the wood, but the pitch that is the blood. So brothers and sisters, Every one of us here has been seen. Amen. Satan has no access to you. Amen. 
When somebody tells you the rich in your hometown is responsible, tell the person he is a liar and a big one. The grandmother too, the same one. Mm. Why? Because I am in Christ. Amen. And Christ is in God. Yeah. So if you want to kill me, oh, 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 oh my God friend, first. go and catch God and kill him. <laughs> After killing God, take Christ out of me and kill Christ. Mm. Oh, you can take me out. Amen. Why? Amen. It can work. I am in the app. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Ah. So it depends on those in the ark to eat themselves. So the tiger must eat the sheep. Don't eat me. Oh. So Noah was a typology of Christ. And the ark was a typology of Christ. That's where we are today. Through one man's obedience, Salvation is to everyone. But hold on. Let me go back to where we read. The Bible said that everybody there was corrupt. <clears throat> Violence was everywhere. Except Noah. He was right. Perfect. In our generation, not the same thing. 14, 15, 16 years, they have boyfriends. 17, 18, they have two abortions already. 19, they have four promises in their houses already. It's happening right now. But are you like them? No. That means in your generation, you are perfect. You have come out of them. You don't do the things the way they do their things. Uh -uh. You are Noah in your time. The Bible says, and Noah found grace on Adam. He didn't get, get Adam anyhow. The guy was walking in his lane. He doesn't want to do the things Adam could do. Even though he says he was okay, that's, a, that's the first line. Right? Okay, now, okay, thank you. Check the Instagram these days. Check the Snapchat these days. The WhatsApp status these days. Rather, rather than you see them doing. <laughs> By me, it was me. Don't do the things the world are doing. That will make you different in God's sight. So when he comes for destruction, he will single you out. There were millions of people there. He singled Noah out. The, the sons of Noah, you read it, Ham, Shah, and Japheth. They were young guys, 100 years old. Shem, for 100 years, when this day began was feared him and great. The masters love him. Man was looking around and saying, wow, that's Mr. Shem. Say, oh, my friend, don't touch me. He knew who he was. Yes. In that generation, it must be the same thing. The organ is going to his work. The girls will be looking at him. Hey, my friend, I'm a child of God. Please step back. So, at a point in time, there must be a difference between you and those out there. They were dressed to hear, to expose everything, minus you. Oh. Noah's time, it was the same. In my time, it's even worse. They drank alcohol and blow the joints and smoke the weeds. Yes, but you are <coughs> not like that. We are different generation altogether. Amen? Amen. I end here. Questions. <laughs> Don't talk, oh, I said question. Yes. Uh, About the West Ark. Um, but as you so in, um, yeah, um, give the film so that no one gets and then see the altar that, um, yeah, the dove, yeah, niet van boven uit liet om zo aan de aan de zijkant te lopen. Ja. Maar hoe maar hoe uh, hoe kwam de raad dan uh, terug? Omdat uh, Noah's Ark has a deck. If you um, if you see the current ships, every ark that flows has a deck, and the birds can fly anywhere. I believe the birds feed through the window. That's why tigers go, can't go through windows. Yeah. See, they came through the window. So the same window, when Christ was being baptized, what has happened? The Bible says the heavens opened, and the dove descended like, the Spirit of God descended like a dove through the same window. 
So whenever heavens open, it means your window opens. Good question. Let's try for him. Two questions more. Yes. Yes. Where in the Bible can I Genesis chapter seven verse Okay. I think seven verse seventeen. Yeah. Okay, from 15, 7 15. So those that entered male and filled male, and God commanded him. Now the flood, okay, verse 18 prevailed. Verse 19. Okay, I think from Genesis chapter 7, verse 17 downwards. And greatly increase the act, and the act moves to first, okay, before then. Chapter 8. Chapter 8. Okay. No, that was after the flood. Before them. That's chapter 7. 7 verse 16. 16. Okay, I think 16. Yeah. So, so those that entered, male and female, of all the flesh, went in as God had commanded. And the Lord, thank you, 16. And the Lord shut him in. Yes? <coughs> Who said that system? Uh, Akonta. Akonta, thank you. Let's have Akonta. <laughs> Last question. Last one. Yes. I have a question. If God knew that mankind was sent against him, you come and give it the same question. <laughs> if God knew man was sin, why did he create man? <laughs> If God knew Satan would sin, why did he create Satan? Talk to me. If God knew that mankind is not against him, why did he regret or get caught up in that? If God knew man would break his heart, why did he make man anyway? Because God is omniscient. Omniscient. He knows all things. He knew man would sin and break his heart. Why did you make mine in the first place? Why did you worry about that? Then explain to me. No. God, knew, God knows man will break his heart. Yes. So why would he even bother if he's, they are breaking his heart? I mean, why are like you, 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 you already you know you know them? them? If because they already know, know that they will hurt you. you. you know, I know you will hurt me. So if you hurt me, I don't care. Because yeah. I know already. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, tell me what you say. We can't know how you do that. <laughs> now we have parents in our houses, yeah. Two boys, three girls. Let me let me bring this down level, yeah. And then your brother is so stout. Sometimes your mother will say, "I call your brother, but then I'm going to walk away." Yes, I've heard it before. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We can do free. He no go from the main wing. As if it's not the same mother that gave birth to you. Who has said that before? <laughs> My mother used to say, Watch it in Jesus. You know what in Jesus? If you go to the abattoir to buy uh, uh, meat, there's a. Uh, this uh, what do you think? Tea, tea. But that I was very skinny and I was stubborn. Me? Ay, ay, ay. Me like that. I'm stubborn, oh. <laughs> Where does he come from? He knew I am a star, I would disturb him. But he has given his birth to me anyway. So, if God knew man will cause him this pain, why does he have to bother? Of course, he is a father. Yeah? The Bible says he gives his heart. Picturing that as you are, that's how God is. Mm? So, the fact that you will be start will be certain that when you are starting, your father shouldn't feel bad. It's normal. That's how parental it is. That tells you that God has the feelings too. So, the more start you become, you are hurting God. You can be start sometimes, stuff. Mm -hmm. And I also think that. Um, 
he want to know if we can be obedient to him. Of course. Yes. He wants to also know, yes, thank you, that we can be obedient. Even though he has given you your will to decide to do what, but he wants to see if you can be obedient to him. He told Adam, mm -hmm. of all the fruit here, chop everyone. <laughs> Everything. <laughs> chop every one of them. What it is. But that's why I don't chop it. He wanted to know if Adam would be obedient to him. But at the end of the day, Adam could not. He chopped it. He's obedient. Sorry, sir. the lady face, the command face. Are you a contest sister? A contest? Is your sister? No, no, no. Oh, okay. Hey. I don't really know really. you are a contest sister. Uh, I have a question. Ask me, please. If uh, Noah and his sons were perfect, how come uh, we are repeating all those sins and corruption and all Amen. that stuff? Amen. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good question. It's a good question. The Bible says Noah was perfect in his generation. He did not say Noah and his children were perfect. He alluded only the perfection and uprightness to Noah. But the Bible says if God saves one, he saves his entire household. So God saved his household because of his perfection. He will not say, hey, you, are, you are perfect, but I'll kill your son. Kill. No. It doesn't work like that. So when you stand here for God, He stands here for your kids and your family around you. The last one. Uh, Elba. Elba. Oh, Elba. I'm sorry, we let that come oh, in first. Uh, 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 just uh, to continue oh, yeah. what that mm -hmm. said. You said, uh, the Bible says, if God saves one, He saves his God. His entire house. His entire house. But we also understand that judgment is individual. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. how do you explain that? Also? What you are saying is judgment. Yes. This one is saving. Now, hold on. When God's judgment came in the world, in the water time, God could have said, Noah, you are perfect. Come, exception of you. Come into the ark. But let me judge your children and kill them. He didn't do that. He saved them. But in our time, I'm here. In our time, John 3.16 says, For God so loved the whole world, that he gave his only begotten son, that who, 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 that time becomes individualistic. So, Papa Yansen is no more going to atone for you, because you are part of the whoever, right James? So this time, your kids now they are under age, they don't know nothing. God will save you and save them, but when they reach maturity, they become part of Whoever believes in him. So when the judgment comes, no more, because you profess me as a father, you let the son of God live a righteous life, and your kids are going wayward, God will save them. That time judgment comes individually. But in Noah's time, it didn't come individually, the entire generation was wiped out. That's how it is. It's okay like that for you? Yeah, we will continue later. Last one, last one. Time, last one, last one. So last my one. question is, he said Noah and his family entered the ark. Yeah. And the water destroyed their whole earth. Yeah. So At that, least that's the way you read is there. Yeah, it there, yeah, it destroyed the earth. Okay. So does so that mean that uh, Noah's children Noah's grandchildren married themselves to, to fill yeah. the head of yeah. the Bible says that Ham, Sham, Japheth, Noah. How many men are named? Four. Mrs. Noah's name was not named. The Bible says Ham, Sham, Japheth, they are wives. Yeah, they also had wives. Yeah. They, their names were not mentioned. So after the flood, God blessed them and said, be fruitful and multiply. So Ham, Sham, Ham, left with the wife, fruitful and multiply. Sham, multiply. So they married them. So they married them. Those days was allowed. Yeah. But now you cannot marry Shaki. You can't now. How was it? How was it described that now you can marry God brought in the law. In Exodus, uh, yeah, he brought in the law, a sister should not sleep with a brother. 
God breaking the law. That time there was nothing like that. And again, there are few people on earth, few. So if they don't intermarry themselves, they can't reproduce. But now we are too many already, so we don't try. Abomination. Yeah, now it becomes abomination. Yeah. Even your your father's your father's second wife or your father's girlfriend, you are not allowed to do that. But before you can. Yeah.